Hello, a seismometer is an instrument used to detect and record ground motion caused by seismic waves such as those generated by earthquakes, volcanic eruptions or other sources of ground vibration. Basically, the seismometer consists of two parts and one part is a sensor that detects the earthquake and converts it into an electrical signal and the other electronic, and the other electronic part uh, that amplifies processes and records this weak signal for uh, further processing. In the previous video, I described a very simple and, in and inexpensive way to make a very sensitive geophone sensor that is capable of detecting earthquakes from the entire globe. This time I will continue by presenting the electronic part, which together with the sensor will represent a complete home seismometer. During the production I will use a ready-made module and a microcontroller, so there will be no need of extensive prior knowledge and experience in the field of electronics. First, with, uh, first let's dwell on the amplifier. The signal induced in the sensor coil is weak, uh, so it needs to be amplified. For this purpose, we use this small module with, with LM358 integrated circuit, which is capable of amplifier weak signals up to 10,000 times. We can regulate the gain with these two small potentiometers. A module like this uh, can be had for a very low price, less than one dollar, so I avoid making this part. However, if you want, you can make it using a simple operational, uh, operational amplifier integrated circuit and few resistors. The, do, the two potentiometers uh, of the module were in the, middle, were in the middle position and I did not move them at all during the installation and I precisely defined the amplification of the entire system in the Amasys software as I will describe to you later. We test the functionality of this amplifier by gently pressing the pad during which a small red LED should light up for the short time. Uh, next, let's focus on the part with the Arduino microcontroller. Namely, the signals needs to be processed to remove the noise and unnecessary components uh, that the filters serve and then convert it to a form that is recognized by the PC software uh, converted from an analog to digital signal. For this purpose, NerdAQ2 code is uploaded to Arduino. NerdAQ is a data acquisition system developed uh, at New England Research to support Slinky-based seismometers in schools. The DAC is built around an Arduino and streams 16-bit oversampled values to an to a USB port. The data is sampled at about 18 samples per, per second. Arduino code is provided for unrestricted use. Installing the code uh, on the Arduino follows as a standard procedure. This project is sponsored by PCBWay. They have sold the services you need to create your project at the best price, whether it's a school project or complex professional project. On PCBWay you can share your experiences or get inspiration for your next project. They also provide completed surface mount SMT PCB assembly service at the best price and ISO 9001 quality control. Uh, visit www.pcbway.com for more services. In Arduino ID, in Tools, we select Arduino Nano Board and corresponding COM port, in our case that is COM, COM port 8. Then we go to open and locate the folder with the NERD AQ software and select, select NERD AQ PDE file. Now we press the upload button. 
and when it's done, the part with the Arduino is finished. Now the code is uploaded to Arduino. The consumption of the whole assembly is very low, so there is no need for an external power supply, but it is powered through the USB port of the computer. The signal from the Arduino microcontroller through the USB to serial port is transmitted to the AMAS ASPC software. This software actually performs signal visualization as well as its logging for further processing. Now we need to install the AMAS software. Then we start the software and go to the settings, this station and enter the, the station name, longitude, latitude and elevation of the current station. Next in the settings, go to COM port uh, and we need to enter COM port to which the Arduino is connected. In our case it is COM4. Then in settings, uh, next device, we need to set SEP UK1 device. Next in set 0 level, we need to put this number 32767. Now we need to set the filters duration of one line of the graph and gain. For this purpose we go to the settings again and helicorder. Uh, horizontal time limit uh, represents the duration of one line of the graph. If we leave one hour then the whole graph contains data for the last 24 hours. We, we need to, to, to adjust the gain value according to the amplitude of the signal, in my case that is 25. Next, we, we set the low pass and high pass filter in, the, the, in, in this way. During the operation of the software, we can constantly change all these settings. Uh, we can also zoom in. Uh, we can also zoom in and analyze a specific time period from the graph. For example, this period. Zoom. Or this longer period in addition to these basic ones there are many more useful functions that you then that you can find by analyzing the the whole menu well we can go back to a certain date and certain previous time to analyze the event The data from the previous period are located in folders and in one year the size of the files does not exceed 1 gigabyte. I should mention that for the IRIS Institute you can also download the latest, latest Java version of this application called JMSAs which can also work online but this time I will use old AMASA's application because this is a standalone local seismometer. As you can see, all the components including the sensor are mounted on a solid base which can be leveled using three nuts and then placed on a solid surface. I have been actively using this seismometer on my old computer for the last six years and there has never been any problem in terms of software blocking or anything like that. In the next part I will try to briefly demonstrate the sensitivity of this seismometer but it is still best to make it yourself and see its capabilities in a real earthquake.
And finally, a short conclusion. So far, I have built many types of seismometers, at least those that are suitable for self-construction and therefore I have relatively large experience with their sensitivity and practical use. I can confidently confirm that this is the most sensitive, cheapest and easiest to build seismometer you can find instructions for on the internet. Of course, this is a not professional instrument and serves for a relative presentation of the state of the earthquake locally. Also, this is a great device that can be successfully used for training in educational purposes. As I mentioned before, I have been using it continuously for more than six years and with every major earthquake I present a seismological report on my Facebook profile. After a certain time, I, uh, I gained experience so that it, at first look on the seismogram I can really analyze whether it is a local or distant earthquake as well as its relative strength and other characteristics. Let me mention that this seismometer can detect an earthquake in any region of the globe if it is stronger than 7 degrees according to Richter and at depth greater than 50 kilometers. In the following I present to you images from several seismograms that show earthquakes near, earthquakes near me as well as very distant ones.